fishing, it's fine, but hooking is the only way. We're gonna show you how to catch some fish today. We're in the, the getting into the winter months and uh, I want to show you a new technique. I've actually been doing it for quite a while, but um, I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it a drop and drag. So basically, um, this is the time of the year uh, when the shad start dying off. Um, bass will push bait into marinas, into coves, break lines. Um, I've found them everywhere. And basically, it's a technique technique that I've been doing for quite a while, and it's really simple. I use uh, uh, spoons, you know, either Blade Runner or Castmasters. But basically, what I do is I cast it out, or pitch it in the docks, or I'll cast, make long casts, and I just drag it. So I'm almost working it like a worm. Once in a while, I just give it a little twitch just to make the spoon, leave it on the bottom, but the spoon is just fluttering a little. And those bigger bass will actually feed on them, you know, and they'll cruise around on the bottom and actually pick it up. I've set the spoon on the bottom, not even moved it and had them pick it up. But it's a very effective way and I'm going to show you how to do it. Hey Alan, what are you going to teach me today? I'm going to teach you drop and drag. It's a technique I use in the winter time when I'm catching bass, you know, that are going after eating shad. Why is it only in the winter time that you can do yeah, this? Because in the winter time, shad go up and they spawn and they move up in our major creek channels, all these lakes, and they spawn and the bass just fall. Yeah, and how do you find them? with your electronics. Yeah. So, you know, having good electronics really pays off. Um, asking people that fish the lakes all the time, they'll tell you like, you know, where we're at, they go up to Puda Creek because that's the main feeder to the lake. So they go up there in the winter and they spawn. So I go up there and I follow them. So I, you got to graft them. Okay. And I notice sometimes you look you look at like different birds, like what kind of birds do you look at? Mm -hmm. Those greaves, they're um, a diver that go after and eat the shad along with the fish. They dive down around 40 feet. So, you know, they're like a fish finder me. I always look for greaves and then I'll turn my electronics on and go look around. Okay, and I saw like we're in the marina, but you like, seem to be really specific about where we go. We're not like in the open water, we're not on the bank. You always seem to to look for the boat slips. Why yeah, is that? Yeah, because when the shad start, you know, all these marinas and stuff, there's a creek channel that runs right through them. And basically the shad will push up under the docks for protection. You know, they'll oh. go underneath it for the shade that think they're protected. So I do a lot of marinas in the wintertime. It's also a good home for a lot of bass. So when you say drop and drag, what does that mean? Uh, but, First of all, you got to use the right kind of spoons. Mm. So when I'm doing the drop and drag, I use, usually use a cast master. Okay. And then I pitch it out and it's a slender. And I throw it out, peel the line out till the lure hits the water bottom, even under the docks. Mm -hmm. till it hits the bottom and then I twitch it. So the spoon never leaves the bottom because the bigger fish, the little fish will go up in a bait fish and attack them and injure them. So they'll fall to the bottom and the bigger fish will go and feed on them. So, so it's, it's a good way to catch So it's them. different. Before when you showed me the cast master, we would just pick, throw it out and like just wind it back, right? Mm -hmm. And now this way we're, we're trying to look like a shad? We're imitating a dead shad, an injured shad on the bottom. And those bigger fish just cruise around and pick them up off the bottom. Okay. A lot of times I even take the spoon and I don't pop it or do not, sometimes I just shake it just so that the spoon flutters on the bottom. And then I drag it like a worm. So how do you know you got a bite? Uh, you really don't feel them bite it. You'll feel it like it's stuck and just set the hook. Okay. And when you're in the marinas, a lot of times you'll set the hook on the cable, but if you don't <laughs> set it real hard, it, you know, you can get it off. Yeah, and what, what kind of like line do I use? Um, that's one of the things I, when I'm spooning, especially this kind of technique, I use 20 pound mono 
I don't use any braid. I use um, monofilament and 20 pound tips and sometimes I use 25. And it's because the mono is sinks slower? It makes the bait lay more flat. Oh, so okay. a lot of times when I'm pitching out, you'll see the line go out and you're gonna see a big bowl. So I want that spoon to lay flat, not upwards. Okay, all right, well, let's see it in action. Okay, so all I'm doing is I'm, most of the time I'm in these marinas again, so I just pitch it out. And then I let it out, keep letting the line roll out of the spool till it sets on the bottom. So most of the time I'll be in like 25 to 30 feet. I let it hit the bottom, you can tell the line stops. And then I just drag it, and once in a while I twitch it so that spoon flip flops on the surface, on the bottom. And then I reel, turn the handle, shake it a little bit, turn the handle, and you'll just feel it load up and set the hook as hard as you can and reel them up. Okay, let me try it. Now, do I go for the corners? You gotta try to and get as close as you can when you're fishing the marina. Okay. You wanna try to get it as close as you can to the back. Okay, and then and I lit it out. Make sure you let the line out so it falls free and goes straight to the bottom. Now I got my my real, my knob here real loose, Should right? Should be loose. Okay, and then what I do? Then just kind of lift it, drag it slow, and then once in a while I'll pop it. But you don't wanna, pop it so you lift the spoon a foot off the bottom. You want oh. it just so it flip flops. Just like a, a fish, just an last. Yeah. Yeah. So that he's yeah. injured. And, you, and just... you said something real interesting to me. Like I always thought like the little ones would be at the bottom getting the leftovers from the big, the big bass and that the big bass are, are swimming around. But you told me that exact opposite. Yeah, usually the little fish will go in these big balls of bait and attack them and injure them and they'll fall to the bottom. It's like a kid, you know, doing things, just doing despite. And the big ones will just let, cruise along the bottom, pick them up, they don't have to chase nothing. Oh, okay. Once you get find these fish and locate them, you catch one after another. And what they do is, especially in marinas, they go around and around and around. So you, sometimes you could just wait and they'll come back around. And like what, what size weight is that? Three quarter ounce. Three quarter Three quarter ounce. and one's the size you want to use. And like in, in, like this water only has about one foot clarity. Mm -hmm. What color do you like in this water? Um, gold. Gold. So a lot of times if you if I can't see more than two feet, I'll use gold. Mm -hmm. Or if I'm in the docks where it's shady, where there's a roof, then I'll, you'll see me with gold. Then when the sun's on the water, I use silver. Oh, okay. So very effective way of catching. Well, let's put it to use. Okay, let's, let's go. Let's get some big bass. All right, let's go. <laughs> so you want to let the line out as free as you can without getting a backlight. Then you're going to just drag it and just shake the tip. Now I can feel it every time it falls onto the bottom. Yeah. yeah. Well, you you don't want it to leave the bottom. So you just... Like, like how many inches, is it popping like a foot? No, you don't even want it off the bottom. You want to just leave it on the bottom. That's why you call it drag. So you just drag it and then just shake it. So the spoon, like I showed you, how it just flip flops, but you always want it on the bottom. You don't want to lift it up. There's other times of the year where we spoon like that, but not in the winter. And I'm really slow, right? Because it's winter yeah, time? Yeah, you just drag it. Okay. Drop and drag. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> it's a very methodical way of fishing. It's slow, but it's very effective. And you have that low pitch. That's why she knocked the screen off my 12. We were going to call it pitch and break. <laughs> <laughs> but someone didn't find that funny. <laughs> well, I was deciding whether I was gonna throw you overboard or kill you. <laughs> Brand new electronics. It didn't force me to be in a video. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm gonna give you guys a tip. You gotta be careful when you're sitting in the back of my boat and you're pitching. Um, my producer was pitching and look what she did. She pitched and hit my fish finder with the Castmaster and broke it. And now it's hers. 
because she's got a new one coming up for her boat, but I'm going to trade her. <laughs> oh, I got a bump. Well, once you feel weight, sit. Yeah. Do you reel down you to set it? Just sit. Just sit. Okay. Yeah, because you're in contact with your lure all the time. Yeah. So you don't, it's not that you have slack lines, so you just sit. But when you have that bow, isn't it a little bit slack? Mm, no, because you always, that little bow won't, nothing. You get the hang of it. You might catch one. I'm lucky. Hopefully I don't break anything else. I hope you like this video and um, please hit the like and subscribe doesn't cost you anything to subscribe uh, you could add a comment on the bottom and you know I used to get back within a few days and answer your comments uh, if you go down on the bottom there's a little arrow down there if you click it it gives you the link of all the products that I'm using and uh, all the lures and line and rods reels etc so I'm glad you're watching the channel and you know if you subscribe it'll really help me out and thank you very much and I appreciate all the help fishing is fine but hooking is the only way we're gonna show you how to catch some fish today